Hi friends, once again we are in ophthalmology for undergraduates and postgraduate beginners. Iris, iris is an important structure in our eye. Iris is nothing but a diaphragm separating the anterior chamber from the posterior chamber. While we examine the iris in ophthalmological examination, the following two things we have to look for. One is the color of the iris, another is the pattern of the iris. The color of the iris is very very important because the color is decided by the rays from which a particular person is coming from. Depending upon the amount of melanin pigments that are present in the body, if the person is from Africa, where people have so much of melanin pigments in their body, their iris will look black in color. If it is from the Asian countries, where the melanin pigments are moderate in number, the iris will look brown in color. If the people are from European countries, then the melanin pigments are going to be very very less and the color of the iris is going to be lighter. Next is the pattern of the iris. Pattern of the iris is nothing but the design of the iris. What is seen? The design of the iris is individualized for each person. Just like a fingerprint, it is individualized for each person. In fact, we should say that the design of the iris is much more specific for each person compared to the fingerprints. That is why they have caught the picture of our iris in other photograph in our country. So people can be easily identified from the design of the iris. Let us see them in detail. Let us see how to examine the iris. If you put the light from the front, sometimes the color and pattern of the iris may not be so much clear. It is always better to put the light from an angle on the temporal side so that you can see clearly the color and pattern of the iris all 360 degrees. This is how it is better to appreciate the iris. Next coming to the color and its abnormality in the iris. Color of the iris can be normal for the particular race. Already I have told for Indians it is brown in color. For Europeans it may be lighter colored. For Africans it will be black in color. Sometimes the color of the iris may be different for that particular race. If it is so, if it is affecting only one eye, it is called as heterochromia iridis. iridis. If the color of the iris has changed in both the eyes, it is called as heterochromia iridum. So you should know what is iridis and iridum. Iridis is singular, affects only one eye. Iridum is plural, affects both the eyes. Let us see some examples where there is heterochromia iridis. Suppose a patient is having a iridocyclitis or anterior uveitis where there will be outpouring of cells and proteins into the aqueous humor. These cells and proteins will be floating in the aqueous humor. These will be deposited on the back of the cornea forming the keratic precipitates or it may be deposited on the surface of the iris itself, obscuring its color as well as the pattern. You can see a muddy colored iris in iridocyclitis. The iris may have deposits of cells and proteins on them, making it muddy appearing. The next important example is, one sector of the iris is of a different color. Suppose this is the color of the iris in a European. It appears green colored iris. If one, one sector it becomes brown in color, then it is called as heterochromia iridis. This is not normal for a European person. Next, coming to the third example. 
Sometimes due to certain diseases, some portion of the iris may get damaged, leading to atrophic patches. So here I have drawn a green colored iris. I have drawn a patch of blackness in the iris. The atrophy of the iris can appear black or it may appear gray in color. So this is also one of the examples for heterochromia iridis. Usually this occurs in diseases like iridocyclitis, glaucoma or damage to the iris during a surgery or due to trauma. Next coming to the heterochromia iridum. I said iridum is plural. A European person who should have a lighter iris normally if he has a brown or black colored iris and his body is very much fair then it is called as heterochromia iridum if it is present in both the eyes. For a European it is abnormal. Suppose if a person is a Asian or a African and he has a darker complexion and the iris is green color or bluish in color looking like a cat's eye in both the eyes then it is called as heterochromia iridum. One more example for heterochromia iridis singular is suppose an African person who is supposed to have a black colored iris is having a light colored iris on only one eye and in the other eye it is black in color then that is also called as heterochromia iridis I have drawn here the right eye it appears black iris the left eye it is bluish in color then this is also an example for heterochromia iridis two important terminologies which everyone either UGs or PG should know is the atropia nuvie and pseudo exfoliation what is this atropia nuvie it is the aversion of the pupillary border when the pupillary border averts what will happen the epithelium that is lining the posterior surface of the iris is seen in a wider area in the pupillary margin. So if the pupil the iris is brown in color, that part close to the pupillary margin will be black in color and it will be wider. So that is called as ectropia nuvie. Usually it is a congenital one where there is a dysgenesis of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber due to some congenital problem has not developed properly. If you happen to see a ectropia nuvie, naturally there is a mal development of the angle of the anterior chamber and these people are prone for glaucoma. The next term is pseudo exfoliation. Here in this picture the pupillary margin of the iris is not clear. You can see that it is not well defined. There are some white dots along the pupillary margin. They look like a dandruff like material. This is what we call it as pseudo exfoliation. This is nothing but a degeneration of the iris tissue leading to pseudo exfoliation dandruff like material formation. So this is also very very important because when you are going to do a cataract surgery this may affect the outcome of the cataract surgery. People having pseudo exfoliation too are prone for pseudo exfoliative glaucomas. So pseudo exfoliation whenever it is seen in the pupillary margin or over the iris we have to be double careful in doing the procedures and examining the eyes to detect some other problems coexisting to the discussion on the pattern of the iris. All of you should know that each iris will have a pattern. It is said to be normal if the pattern is same all around 360 degrees. 
Let us see some examples for abnormal patterns. A congenital defect may lead to abnormal pattern within the same iris. I have drawn straight lines here, curved lines here. Such a different pattern within the same iris is an example for abnormal pattern of the iris. The next is atrophy of the iris. Already I have told in heterochromia, uh, atrophy of the iris can alter the pattern of the iris. Next example is nodules in the iris. In chronic iridocyclitis, you can have, see small swellings in the surface of the iris. If it is close to the pupillary border, it is called as copious nodules. If it is away from the pupillary border, it is called as Bussaka nodules. Next is, we can see red lines on the surface of the iris. Normally, vessels are not visible in the iris. But sometimes, vessels may be visible on the surface of the iris. This is called as neovascularization of the iris. Usually, it is seen in diabetic retinopathy. It is seen in central retinal vein occlusions. Ischemia of the retina leads to release of vascular endothelial growth factors which may come to the anterior chamber and stimulate the iris to formation of new vessels on the iris. This is neovascularization of iris. Next picture is, you see the pupil in the center, another hole is see there in the periphery. So this is called as peripheral iridotomy or peripheral iridectomy. It is usually done to treat glaucomas that is primary angle closure glaucomas or done to prevent the glaucomas. So this is a peripheral iridectomy or iridotomy. Iridectomy is surgically removing a portion of the iris is iridectomy. Iridotomy is making a hole in the iris using laser that is called as iridotomy. Next is a septa iridectomy. Usually one portion of the iris is removed whenever there is a difficulty in delivering the cataractous slits or there may be a dense posterior synecae as we have discussed in the previous video that time the lens cannot be removed easily so we remove a portion of the iris this is called a sector iridectomy this will help in delivering the lens out the next thing is the keyhole iridectomy Usually keyhole iridectomies are done when there is a central corneal opacity. When there is a central corneal opacity, the pupil and the opacity will be on the same line so that the light cannot pass into the eye to give you vision. In that case, we can make a cut in the inferior and the nasal portion of the iris like a keyhole like this so that some amount of light can enter through the inferior and medial portion and patient will have some useful vision. These are some of the examples for abnormal pattern in the iris. Other important things we should be knowing is one is D-shaped pupil, other thing is aniridia. First we will see what is D-shaped pupil. In case of trauma to the eye, the attachment of the iris to the ciliary body may be severed. So it may get separated on one portion. So what will happen? There is a portion where it will appear black in color. This is D. And because of this detachment, the pupil which should be round will become D-shaped. The D may be in any direction. This is an example of trauma to the eye where there is separation of the iris from the ciliary body. The next thing is an iridia. An iridia means absence of iris. See in this picture I have drawn the corneal diameter. I have drawn the lens and the zonules. There is no iris here. This is called as an iridia. An iridia may be due to congenital not development, non-development of the iris. Congenitally, the iris has not developed. Or, because of trauma, the entire iris may have detached from the ciliary body, leading to aniridia. I hope I have 
discussed in detail about the iris examination and the abnormalities commonly seen. Let us stop here and we will see in the next video about the pupil. Thank you.